Okay, then nearly forgot to talk about the extension task. The extension task for ES 5.1 was to compare the results that were got in 2018 to the results that we achieved in 2019 because there was a marked difference. So let's have a look at the differences and try to come up with some reasons of why they might have happened. Right, so the 2018 results you've already seen. Uh, so for the domestar, so average tighter of 27.8-ish. Uh, same again, 30.4 uh, and 28.7-ish. Uh, however, if you look down at the 2019 results, there is a marked difference there. These were the exact same samples. They had not been used since the previous year. We had literally left them in the cupboard uh, with the caps on, so there was, shouldn't have been any loss of any particles or anything like that. Just left there in a cupboard, not in hot conditions, not in cold conditions, just in a cupboard. No sunlight. Uh, so in theory, nothing that should have led to any sort of uh, chemical reactions there. But what we are seeing here is a very different set of titration results. Um, so here we've got an average titer of, uh, what would that be, 21.33, something like that, uh, compared to the 27.8-ish. The power zone originally was 30-ish uh, and now is about 16. So that has, that has decreased almost by half. Frightening. Uh, the diluted version of the Wilco's own one just we couldn't get accurate tighter values for at all they were changing almost instantaneously so you can see there the 0 0.2 of a mil 0 0.1 of a mil so what we did is we then did it just as the pure bleach the concentrated bleach and still the tighter values that we were getting were about five millimeters as opposed to uh the 28.7 that we had for the diluted last year so that was a bit of a shock to us all when we were doing that. I mean, not to the students who were doing it at the time. They didn't know what the results were supposed to be looking like. But I was looking at my results thinking, what has gone on there? Um, so I'm really disappointed uh, that we haven't been able to do the practical again this year because we kept the exact same samples again in their bottles in the same conditions, basically to see if this year they went even lower again. Um, but unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to do that, so I, I'm gutted about that. But hopefully, um, when we get back in school, uh, this is a great practical for a lot of skills. So hopefully we will get a chance to actually do this practical and see uh, what the results are for the third year in a row. So I did the calculations uh, in the very similar way to as I did the previous years. And as you can see here, obviously the tighter values were significantly different. Therefore, the concentrations and the number of moles were significantly different as well. So then when I broke that down to pence per mole, we get very different results here, especially for the Wilco zone one. So from the 2018 results, we decided that the Wilco's, in terms of just the moles of the bleach particles, that the Wilco's one was probably the best value for money. But then we obviously then mentioned that there were other factors that you need to consider as well. Whereas when it had been left in the cupboard for a year, um, with no external factors that should have affected it, you can see that actually that's gone up to 4,821 pence per mole, which was easier to express in pounds, 48.22 pence per mole. What on earth might have happened for that to occur? Well, I'm going to assume somehow that our bleach molecule, the sodium hypochlorite, NaClO, um, must have decomposed. Therefore, the price that we originally paid um, remained the same while the number of moles decreased, thus increasing the pence per mole. And actually, for each sample of bleach, you can see there has been an increase in the pence per mole. So I think it's possibly safe to assume that most of them has experienced some sort of degradation, some sort of mole decomposition there. And actually, in a lot of cases, the idea that a product decomposes over a period of time is valid. You probably have seen, but not necessarily paid attention to, on cosmetics in particular, there'll be little numbers on them. 
So many products do have a fixed shelf life that they are effective for. With things like cosmetics, it's usually based on the idea of bacteria replicating within the sample. So in foundation, eyeshadow, any sort of makeup type things, um, there is a specific life expectancy for that product which is matched to how long it can remain clean for so it is very important everyone um, for cosmetic products if you do use makeup please do check the life expectancy it sounds a little bit strange to say but the, the product expectancy uh, the product life expectancy for the item and after that time you should really chuck it away so with this bleach here, they all have experienced some degradation over a period of time, which does seem quite natural. However, within this, what we can do is add another layer of reasoning to our discussion of which bleach is most cost effective. Because if you're not using a large quantity of bleach, if you just want to use a little bit every now and again, then you'd want your product to have a long lifetime. So. When we have a look at these figures here, yes, the Wilco's one was the cheapest per mole in 2018, but if you didn't finish all that bleach off in, let's say, a month, two months, definitely a year, then that is not worth your money over an extended period of time. Let's do a little calculation to see um, what the change in the Domestos and the Parazone would be. So comparing the 2018 to the 29 values, what I've done is taken the 2019 values and minus the 2018 values to see how much of a loss we are making for each one there. And as you can see there, um, actually, the Domestos here, despite the fact that it was initially the most expensive per mole, it has experienced the least loss of moles over a period of time. Therefore, that would change our argument altogether. We might say now with these new results that the Domestos is yes more expensive as an initial investment investment in bleach <laughs> as an initial purchase it is higher but it lasts longer therefore you might get more use out of it and more moles over a specific period of time not only that both the Domestos and the Parazone had significantly higher um, quantity of active ingredients within their formulation. So it did have the foaming agents, it did have colorants, it did have odorants. So there's more to the effectiveness of the bleach than necessarily just the prevalence of the bleach particles themselves. Some of them inc even include additional whiteners. Okay, so that's ES 5.1, well and truly completed with some extra bits and bobs stuffed in there. As you can see, for an industrial chemist, it's quite tricky to balance up all these factors. Now, obviously, that is just based on two practicals that we did. For an industrial chemist, you have to do lots of repeats and make sure you control your variables correctly. But in addition to that, you also have to weigh up the longevity of your product and any additional features that you want it to have. That's it for now, ladies, gents, girls, boys and others. I hope this has been interesting and informative for you. Uh, that'll do for now. Off you go. Be gone, minions of science.